Welcome to day 11 out of our consecutive posting of videos of the rebuild of our boat and as you can see some other stuff. Yesterday we had a little birthday party going on and I have to say we didn't wake up fresh enough to start really early at the shipyard. However, we got up eventually, put our work clothes on and now just before heading off the shipyard with Luik, this is going to be his first day of helping. Didn't want to make it too hard so took a little scenic route detour over here so technically if you follow this coast you'll end up at the boat we made it to the shipyard and you might be able to see it's raining a lot so we're gonna have to work on some other stuff than usual today yesterday it rained a tiny bit so we and it stopped so we ended up using some seeker flex and stuff but today it is soaking so we're gonna have to find some cool things to do for you guys as i did promise a daily episode still and i am going to provide it we still have a few through holes to put in which we are not going to glue in place but we can already prep it for a sunny day also we have the transducer so that's going to be put nice and low down next to the keel and other than that we're going to just work bit by bit show you what's going to be done we're going to put Louis to work for once so he's not bored there we go so we've got half a day to do a bunch of things let me get that depth sounder for you so you can already see what we're going to be installing looks like it is a massive like kind of through hole thingy with a nice manual which I think I'm gonna read first and I don't like reading manuals but I don't want to mess this up MP is also on the other side of the river doing some shopping for another piston of the leg of our table some more through holes the pumps or at least the flushing systems of the toilets so there's a lot of things gonna be coming and arriving today that we can start installing as well but let's get to business stop slacking and work on what After carefully reading the manual many times, we think we figured this out. Now what we know is it has to be placed as most in the first one third of the boat, especially in our case, and 15 to 30 centimeters away from the keel. So we're gonna figure that out later, maybe drill from down to up first. I don't know, or up to down. We could do up to down, down to up. And what else? It says, keel this way so that's one thing and we don't think there is a front or a back just that one thing has to be pointed to the keel so we're going to get the end of the wire i think that's one of the first things we're going to do we're going to hold it up here that's like the longest it has to be we might have it down here but i'd rather have slightly too much wire than not enough and we're going to pull the transducer all the way as far forward as we can and kind of figure out how much forward we can get it i think that's it drill a pilot hole then a big hole. I don't want to seek a flex it in place yet because I think it'd be good to get the anti-fouling on first and then this so we don't have to paint over this or cover it. By the way, MP and I are talking at someone about anti-fouling already. So that should be maybe, we might even have it next week and then we can, if we get everything done under the waterline already, we can already put the anti-fouling on or at least under the keel already, move over that crib and just go sailing. <laughs> Optimistic. Yeah, I can't wait to see what Pete brings back. She's gonna have lots of cool things because I can't wait to have this table nicely epoxied or varnished or even both in place. We weren't sure how long this wire was, but it's definitely going to be enough. So there's definitely enough wire. I mean, that was that's one worry less. Now we need to figure out what one third of the length of the water line is and measure that towards aft and then we'll start drilling. Our keel is 14 meters, the deck is 20 meters, so I'd say the waterline is just over between both of them, so it'll be 16, 17 meters waterline. There we go. It's that done. It's Go and figure out what the total length is of the water line. It said approximately a third, so it's not they're not that specific about it, but we just want to get it right, you know. Not to be close to any through holes either, because through holes can create some bubbles and you don't want that to be interfere. But yeah, let's go and uh, measure the water line and figure out where we're gonna place it. Uh -oh. 
We guessed before 17 meters of waterline and we were exactly right. So now we need to measure about how much? 5.65. So anything from five and a half to six meters from the bow. And that's where we're going to start marking with a pencil and figuring this out. I think we figured out where. We're going to have two through holes over here, which is very far away from the transdu transducer, so that's not a problem. We should figure out from inside if what we drew isn't going to be like right under some ballast and it has to be accessible. So, where is it? Here. Slightly aft, slightly forward of the toilet window next to the keel. So let's go and have a look and see if we can actually make this possible. And based on what's inside, we can move the little X marks the spot around. And it's nice that having someone else do it, if it's wrong, it's not my fault. <laughs> we are quite relieved to find out that when we follow the, what is it? The mark we made under the flooring, we still have a little bit of space which we left between the tubes and the ballast stones. So we can easily, over there for example, fit a transducer. We would rather not have it here as it's got the valve. Uh, we're just going to open the other floor on the other side and see what it looks like. This is definitely okay, but there's also starboard side. And in my opinion, from what we saw, there isn't a front and back. Just make sure one of the sides is pointing towards the keel. As the bottom of our boat is so flat, we can kind of go quite wide and far away from the keel. So literally right under here in that gap, it's 50 centimeters away from the keel. So it gives it enough kind of, the keel won't get in the way of it. So we're just gonna lift up the other floor and uh, have a look. And then we can start drilling the pilot hole. This is a lot uh, more, let's call it crowded than the other side. So I think it's definitely, if it is going to be the other side. There. Yeah, definitely. So let's, because here we've got a T here. It's right under the door frame and more forwards. No, we're going to do it over there. Right next to that 68 over there. I wasn't very nervous about the through holes because that's literally just water needs to get in, water needs to get out. It has to be above the water line or under the water line. But this one, I'm like, there must be a lot about depth sounders and transducers that I might not know about. We've read a lot, we've done a lot of thinking. I'm just, it's the only hole I'm in, in the boat I'm quite nervous about. We don't have a cup saw that's this diameter also. To cup saw five centimeters of hardwood is a massive pain. So we're just gonna do the same as the inlet for the engine and just drill a few holes and then get the jigsaw to just finish it off and a file to make it fit nicely. And this was our little invention. It's on the right place. <laughs> Is that? Uh huh. All right. And now, now the fun job. Smoothing it up.
P just arrived with all the goodies. I want to see what it is. Yeah, I'm excited to show you. And also, she's wondering why we're making the hole so much forward because when we bought the boat, the transducer was under the stairs. True. But yeah, we read the manual and this is how it is. The only problem now, MP, is we can't do the test with the wire on. So you have to pull the whole wire through. The whole wire has to be pulled through and then the transducer. And if it doesn't fit, you have to pull the whole wire out again to file. Anyway, show me what you got. Anyway, show me what you got, baby. I arrived late today, but not because I was lacking. No, not I was like us. <laughs> shopping! I know, it's not just a bag, but most of the things I order, so they'll be sent soon. But it was, let what me is see. It? Let's start with the most exciting, a toilet seat. Wow. A toilet seat. Then we got, this is the automatic switch for the pump, but this one is caged, it's protected. It has a filter, so no big things can go there and get trapped under the switch so it won't stay stuck up or stay like something pressing it to the bottom so i think for the engine room this will be very nice we needed another one because we have two pumps that require at least 16 amps and we didn't have switches that were that big we only had one so i had to get a new one anyway and then i chose this one that has this little protection because i think for the engine room it will make a lot of sense so i'm gonna go there and change this already we have big Build pumps that require at least one and a half outlet and we had only one inch so now we have the right size for the big build pumps so this was my shopping that I have in hand now but I also ordered toilet pumps uh, navigation lights another foot for the table so we can do the lifting and dropping system I don't remember what else but it was an exciting shop. This is what I have in hand now, so I'm gonna do this first thing that I'm excited about, changing this switch, and then I'll see how my day will continue. Okay, anyway, let's go and relieve him from his duties. He's been under the boat for ages. Go then. <laughs> yeah, okay, back there. It does take a while. Some of you might not agree that that is the best way and that there is cup saws and everything. But I really don't want to mess this up and with this thickness of the hole, I think just carefully making a hole with a drill and then jigsaw, we make the hole a bit smaller and then we just file it until it's the right size. Because a hole that size, what is it, 7.3 centimeters? You don't want to mess up. Big hole, he's gonna, we've brought the, oh, it's hot. We brought the transducer down and he's going to pass the wires up to me, which is the only way we can test it. I made the holes with the drill cone shaped inwards just so I wouldn't drill outwards and make it look funny up there. So it did give us a lot more grinding, but this is going to work. Yeah! Woo! It took a little while, but we wanted to make sure it fits snug and not too loose, so better to do it slow and correct. Now we're just gonna make some epoxy resin a tiny bit and just make sure that epoxy cures and then we can... I think we will put it already and when it comes time for anti-fouling, we'll either cover it off with 
uh, masking tape or like unscrew it, let it drop, put it in a bag, paint the anti-fouling and then put it back up. Or paint, oh, we'll see. But for now, MP's just doing a quick vacuum up there and then we're just gonna apply some epoxy resin. Wow, that's curing, what are we gonna do? After curing? After the drying of the epoxy. We can drill some bilge pump through holes, which is nice because it's just a whoop, nothing this big, yeah? I said I was going to do this, so here I am, ready to change our switch for this caged one. I think it's such a good idea. To be honest, I didn't know a caged one existed and I was talking to my dad like, wouldn't it be nice to put something around it so it doesn't get stuck on anything or nothing can drop on it well of course it exists already now i know so you see the floating is there it's just the same thing with this little hard set nothing can damage it from the top should i test it after connecting just like we did yesterday yeah right <gasps> but i wouldn't be able to touch the floating to make it float huh here they think about everything, don't they? is replaced this one is out new in the day and I also did the electric connections it was super easy because I had the wago connector here I just had to replace that so I think now we're ready to test this new one my dad is up there in the panel he just put the pump on also so if I move the switch here it should make the pump work let's see it works installation successful but I don't know if you could tell, there is a glitch in the engine room light when the pump starts, so we need to figure that out. But besides that, success, new switch in place, a lot safer, I love it a lot, right amperage, so we're good to go. Next pump! connections are done now we need to go up to the switch panel connect there and my favorite part test it out first I'm gonna put on manual just quickly okay yeah, yeah. I could hear it now I'm gonna put on auto. Okay. And you have to make it float. Okay. Yeah? No? What? It's on auto. auto. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you scared me. I thought you I thought it wasn't working. Okay. Again. Auto. Nice. Victory of the day. We probably made that three hole under there look a lot harder than needed. Now the problem is we need to put this bilge pump through hole. It's a big one, I don't know the exact size. Right, I think about here. We've managed to get a cup saw that is exactly one millimeter diameter bigger than the actual thread, which is really cool and it's gonna save us a lot of time for the next through holes. We've got half an hour until they will leave. I think we'll just stay, get this finished at least. We won't be able to use any seeker flex. But we'll drill that hole. Epoxy both holes we made today. But let's get the drill. Let's make a pilot hole. And let's put this through hole, get it 
prepped for tomorrow. <laughs> He managed to get through most of it. I think it's a six or seven piece of wood centimeter. We'll figure out soon when we take it out. However, this will only go in th just over three and a half centimeters. So hopefully if we drill from the inside now, it will work. But yeah, he's the hero of the day. Exciting. Yeah, and also we decided to just drill it a bit higher because when, when we measured it, it was just above the seam of the plank. So we decided to just put it a bit high in the middle of the plank it's a completely different size through hole as the other one as well, so it's not going to look the same anyway. And uh, the higher, the better. And it's a big through hole. Of course, it couldn't be easy enough for us to just drill through here. Firstly, the cover board is here, which we did pilot hole through already. Uh, however, I think even if we manage to drill through here, we won't get the entire drill through all the way to the plank. So this is going to be impossible. Right, but it won't fit. Uh, secondly, we might in, end up just putting an elbow joint here and having it come down. Now I'm not sure because I want it to flow as straight out as possible. Either way, I'm gonna make sure we can today have the through hole coming through here. We'll decide about the cover board, uh, the beam shelf later. We might end up just having the hose coming here, straight line and down. But we're gonna go old school. As we can't do anything in here, I'm going to get the hammer and chisel and chisel out that little block that we cut with the cup saw already because it's still fastened because a cup saw only takes the hole out once you've gone all the way through. And then once I've taken that out with the chisel, that three and a half, 35 millimeters that we've already done, I can go in again with the cup saw. Uh, and hopefully it'll pass here and then at least today I want to finish. We're not leaving until we have the through hole in here without seeker, without caulking with just the nut on the other side. That would be a really good accomplishment. And then tomorrow we can either work on the other through holes. Now, of course, the first one we've learned how it's done and definitely not done. Or tomorrow I might just seal this one with Sikaflex and already connect it to the bilge pump and just check this off. After saying that, I think it might be the best idea. But we'll never figure out the thickness of the hole because we chiseled half out. Ah, oh, we can measure here. This thick. <laughs> Let's have a look. Thanks to Luik, we finally have this bilge pump through hole hole made. That's a long word because it's not the through hole itself. We know, the thick, we know the depth of it now. Actually, I'll go down and I'll make sure exactly what it is so that I can go to the welder again and have this cut and extended a little bit. I only do this with three holes above the water line. I do not do this with three holes under the water line. Uh, it was kind of a slow start, tough day. Lots went uh, debatably well and uh, now we just need to send these off to the welder and tomorrow we've got a few more holes to do and I feel like it's going to go really well. Is it going to go work tomorrow? It's going to go really well tomorrow. Yeah, because it's also really the two through holes in the toilet, in the head, are under the water line and are only five centimeters. And then the other three holes in the, above the water line for the, these ones, we know how to do them now. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Easy-ish. Anyway, we're going to wrap up now. This was a 
half a day at the shipyard. We still got quite good progress done as those two holes under the water line, especially that big one for the transducer was really, really big and it took long, but it's done. And this one. So this is a good wrap after all. And we are going to see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Like the video and don't forget to subscribe because uh, it just helps you keep up to date with all the videos that we're posting right now. And also it supports us a lot and it's 100% free for you guys. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, tomorrow morning we'll be here. No slacking. Maybe. But well, yesterday we had a party. So that's. And it's my birthday party. So I was allowed to slack this morning. And P, are you doing well? To the bang? To the bang. To the bang. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Adios.